Hello friends, this video on chemical coordination and integration part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now as I mentioned that the pituitary gland has two parts that is the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe. Now we will first look at the hormones which are secreted by the anterior pituitary. We already discussed about the list of hormones like LH, FSH etc which are secreted by anterior pituitary. So now we will look at each of those hormones in detail and their functions in our body. So first we'll talk about the growth hormone. Now very simple and straightforward at the, as the name itself tells what it is it is that hormone which helps the cells to grow so basically it sends that instruction to all the cells of the body that it is trying for them to grow so this is the hormone which actually helps you to grow from a small child to a to an adult so it, this hormone is responsible for the overall growth of the body and However, this hormone has to be present in the right amount. If too much of growth hormone is secreted, it can result in gigantism. What is this gigantism? That means oversized individuals. So there are some individuals who become oversized. I mean, normally if you look at human beings, all of them have uh, their heights in a specific range. Right? But you very but you sometimes you see, which is not very common, little uncommon, that some people are too short, we call them dwarf, and some people are like too huge. So they are like giants. So those differences are due to the over secretion or very less secretion of the growth hormone. So over secretion will call gigantism and low secretion causes dwarfism. So Another very important point is that not only the growth hormone, every hormone present in our body should be present in the desirable amount. It should neither be in excess nor should, be, should it be less. So here you can just see how gigantism and dwarfism can take place due to over or low secretion of the growth hormone. The next hormone that we will talk about is prolactin. The word lactin, wherever it comes into picture, lactin is related to milk. You remember lactic acid which is present in milk. So anywhere, anywhere we see the word lact that is related to milk. So this prolactin hormone is the one which regulates the growth and development of the mammary glands. And mammary glands in females are responsible for the production of milk and these gl glands become more active during the lactation period of a woman. So when she gives birth to a child, after that uh, she, feed the, she breast feeds the child and that is when the mammary glands play a very important role. So this prolactin hormone actually helps the mammary glands to grow. So it does not directly produce uh, milk but it helps the mammary glands to grow so that the mammary glands in turn can produce milk. So it helps in the milk production in females and especially during the lactation period. Now often this hormone prolactin is in short form is written as PRL that is the short form of prolactin hormone. Next is the thyroid stimulating hormone which is often written as TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. So what does this hormone do? This regulates the secretion from thyroid gland. So basically the secretion from the thyroid gland, what, what all hormones are secreted from the thyroid gland? There are many hormones like T3, T4, uh, calcitonin these are some of the hormones which are secreted by the thyroid gland but when to secrete those hormones that is decided by the pituitary gland how by secreting thyroid stimulating hormone so whenever this hormone is secreted from uh, anterior pituitary the thyroid gland gets a signal that it is time to secrete the thyroid hormones that is t3 t4 etc so it will start secreting the thyroid hormone so that is how it actually controls the secretion from the thyroid gland. Synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones as I said. Next is the adrenocorticotrophic hormone which is often written in short form as ACTH that is adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So what does it do? 
it regulates the secretion from adrenal gland that is why the name is similar to adreno it starts with adreno because it is related to the adrenal gland so basically this hormone is going to control the adrenal gland so if you see all the hormones which are secreted by the pituitary gland they control some other gland for example tsh controls the thyroid gland prolactin controls the mammary gland adrenocorticotropic controls the adrenal gland so they all control some other gland and the secretion of hormones from that gland so here also it will control the adrenal gland now what does the adrenal gland do the adrenal glands are located above the kidneys so the pair of kidneys here and these are the adrenal glands just above each kidney so and what do they secrete these adrenal gland actually uh, helps to secrete the adrenaline nor adrenaline enzyme hormones so the secretion of those hormones from adrenal gland are controlled by the acth hormone so synthesis and secretion of steroid hormones glucocorticoids so these are the ones which are secreted from the adrenal gland now we will talk about adrenal gland in detail and that time we will see what are the hormones that are secreted from the adrenal gland so this hormone also regulates the changes in body in response to any kind of stress this adrenocorticotrophic hormone next is the luteinizing hormone which is often written in short form as lh that is the luteinizing hormone so let us see what is this luteinizing hormone now this regulates the secretion from testes and ovaries now what are testes and ovaries they are primarily they are the male and female sex organs but other than that also they also secrete some important hormones specifically the male and female specific hormones which actually govern the uh, characteristics and behavior in a male and a female so this luteinizing hormone will regulate the secretion from the testes and ovaries so let us see what all does it regulate so it basically synthesizes it helps in the synthesis and secretion of androgens from testes in males so when we talk about the males in the, in the male body this lh acts on the leydig cells of the testes so now what happens is that this luteinizing hormone this luteinizing hormone will actually act on the leydig cells now what are the leydig cells these are the interstitial cells which are present if you look at the internal structure of the testis you can actually see that uh, there are some tube like cells and just that which are known as the seminiferous tubules just beside them there are some interstitial cells which are called as the leydig cells so this luteinizing hormone will act on the leydig cells of the testes and this leydig cells will produce androgen the androgen which is produced in male is known as testosterone and this testosterone governs all the male behavior in a person for example the appearance of beard mustache or uh, the feeling of the or the process of the sexual uh, processes they are all governed by this hormone called testosterone so this is an androgen so androgens are those hormones which affect the uh, sexual behavior so in males it is testosterone and in females it is some other hormone so we will talk about the females now now what does this luteinizing hormone do in females it induces ovulation in females now the question is what is ovulation now the release of egg from the ovary is known as ovulation so here if you see these two red colored structures which you see they are the ovary these are the fallopian tubes and then you have the uterus here so the eggs are released from the ovary we have already studied about the process of reproduction in case of human beings right so you by now you all know what is ovary and what is testis and what how the process of reproduction takes place so what happens is the when the egg is released from the ovary that process is known as ovulation and this process is regulated by this luteinizing hormone now you might ask how luteinizing hormone will control the process of ovulation because luteinizing hormone is secreted by the anterior pituitary which is located in our brain so from brain how can it control the release of egg from ovary 
that's interesting so what happens is this lh hormone actually acts on the theca cells present in ovary so there are some specialized cells present inside the ovary and if these luteinizing hormone acts on support those theca cells to produce androgens and these theca cells produce androgens which get converted into the female hormones called estrogen so estrogen is the female hormone the way you have testosterone which is the male hormone similarly estrogen is the female hormone so that is how estrogen production is controlled by the luteinizing hormone now let us look at the next hormone that is the follicle stimulating hormone now follicle stimulating hormone which is abbreviated as fsh is very closely linked to the luteinizing hormone because both of them together uh, serve almost similar purpose so let us see what is this it actually stimulate the growth and development of ovarian follicles in females now what are these follicles so ovary we understood but what are the follicles now the follicles are nothing but these these are cyst kind of a structure or a sac like structure in which the egg develops so that is known as the follicle which is also known as the graphian graphian follicle so basically inside the ovary the egg doesn't develop on its own if this is the egg it is surrounded by a cyst kind of a structure so this structure is called the ovarian follicle now this follicle breaks to release the egg during the process of ovulation so the follicle will break break and the egg will be released so that process is ovulation now what happens to the follicle after ovulation has taken place because the egg is released now but what will happen to this bro broken uh, follicle the remains of this follicle forms a structure known as corpus luteum so a structure called corpus luteum is formed from the remains of the graphian follicle after ovulation so that means we can say that this follicle stimulating hormone what does it do it develops it helps to the ovarian follicles to grow and develop after that ovulation happens which is controlled by the luteinizing hormone and after that the formation of corpus luteum is again supported by the follicles thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again